Caitlin, thank you. Uh, we're going to begin our first question. Caitlin will be uh, to your right, standing in the back row. Hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> Megan McEwen, Big Ten Network. Congratulations, first off. Now that you're officially the number one pick, what about your game do you feel like is going to translate best over to the W and specifically in Indiana? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is definitely my passing. I think that's at times kind of what gets overlooked third in my first, game. I think um, the, the pa first. I think the scoring and the long shots is what everybody falls in love with. And then obviously going to an organization that has, in my eyes, one of the best post players Same in the entire the world. Road. That's right. my right. point guard eyes just light up at that. And obviously, Ali has been one of my teammates before. So um, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, but yeah. Uh, Sierra, right there. Me? Uh, hi. Caitlin, third row to your left. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Hi. Uh, who's your biggest rival going into the season? Honestly, like, I don't really feel like I have a rival. I think the biggest thing is, like, the WNBA is so competitive right now. Every sing single time you step on the floor, um, it's going to be a rivalry. I think so many teams are loaded um, with so much talent, and this is the most competitive league in the entire world, less than 144 spots. So, uh you better bring it every single night. Um, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. But I think that's exactly how I, I lived my college career, too, is like every single game, no matter what the opponent was, I prepped the exact same way. I prepared the same way. I brought the same fire. I brought the same energy. And um, I think that's the biggest thing going into, into my WNBA career. Andre. Hey, Caitlin, Howard Magdal at the Nets. Congratulations. Um, I, I saw you share a moment with Lisa uh, after uh, getting the pick. Can you just take us through, you know, what that conversation was, what you guys were talking about, and what it meant to share that with her after you guys are, you know, essentially the two who believe you can make it to back-to-back -back Final Fours? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is, like, I vividly remember Coach Bluter, like, coming and doing my home visit um, in my house during my recruiting. It was at the end of my junior year, I believe, or maybe the beginning of my junior year, around sometime in my junior year, end of my junior year. And I think the biggest thing is, like, we talked about this moment. We dreamed of this moment, but she also believed I would be here, and she coached me really hard to get to this moment. There was a lot of ups and downs. Um, and something I really appreciate about Coach Bluter is, like, no matter what awards or success or wins we ever had or I had is like she never stopped coaching me. She never stopped holding me accountable. Um, she always thought there was ways for me to get better. I know she still thinks that um, and I still think that and that's one of the things I just love about her is like first of all she believed I would be here from the day I committed to her even before that when I was in eighth grade but also um, she pushed me really hard uh, to make me as good as I am. Thanks. Caitlin, the center to your left in the second row. Hi, Jennifer Porti from Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Which player are you looking forward to playing with or against this season? Definitely Aaliyah Boston. Come on now. Um, and I think also Erica Wheeler, like a, a vet, somebody that's been in the league a long time, somebody that is in the organization, has been in the league, understands what it's about, somebody that I can lean on. Um, you know, I'm 22 years old, and um, I don't have all the answers in the world. This is something new to me. This is a new challenge, um, and that's something I'm excited for. But having those type of people around me uh, to lean on and, and ask questions or – when things get hard uh, to be there for me. So I think, you know, those two for sure. Yeah. Uh, third, Caitlin, third row center. Caitlin, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, two questions. First, you've had a whirlwind and a long season. Are you glad that this part of it is over and that you can kind of focus on being a WNBA rookie? And also, too, you mentioned that you know Aaliyah. What has your relationship been like, and what are you most looking forward to playing, most looking forward about to playing with her? Yeah, I think the, you know, obviously the course of the last few weeks has been pretty insane um, in my life, you know, the last two months, you know, playing basketball as long as I possibly could in my college career, and then went home for a couple of days. I got off the plane when we landed in Iowa City. I drove directly back home, had my mom cook me a meal, and then I drove back to Iowa City the next day. Um, we had our celebration, and then I flew to L.A., flew to New York, and now I'm here sitting at the stage. But um, I think the biggest thing is, like, I'm just very lucky to be in this moment. And all these opportunities and these things, they're once in a lifetime. Um, and when, when things might get, you know, tiring or, you know, you have to do stuff, I think it, the biggest thing is to look at it as just like an opportunity. Um, this isn't something everybody gets to do. Um, it's once in a lifetime. And just trying to soak in every single experience because um, I know how quick of a turnaround it is and I have a lot of people helping me. And then obviously Aaliyah Boston, I mean, there's so much you can say about her rookie of the year. Um, in my eyes, one of the best players in the league. Um, and like I said, like as a point guard, like, 
my biggest job is like, I'm just feeding Aaliyah the ball every single game. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there and be like, hey, go make a layup. <laughs> she's going to make my life easy. Um, but she's incredible. But the thing about I love about her is like she's just a great person. Like she loves the game. She knows the game. She supports the game. Um, and she has a smile that affects a lot of people and brings a lot of joy to people when they watch her. So I can't wait to be her teammate again. Uh, Caitlin, in the center section, last row to your right. Hey, Caitlin, Dylan Manfred from Sportico. Uh, just curious about, you know, all the sponsorships you've had and all the NIL deals. How do you plan to maximize this business opportunity now that you are a professional basketball player in the WNBA? How do you plan to carry that on? And also, what has been the biggest piece of business advice that somebody has given you uh, going into this next phase in your basketball career? Honestly, like, if I'm being completely honest, I feel like it doesn't change a ton from how I live my life over the course of the last year. Um, Sponsorships stay the same. Uh, the people around me, you know, agents and whatnot, have been able to help me and guide me through the course of the last year. And I don't know if I would be in this moment if it wasn't for a lot of them. And my mom has done a lot. My dad has done a lot. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing of, you know, the advice I would say is just like lean on the people around you. Like I don't have to do every single thing. And I think at the same time, like in college, I always said like. My main focus is on basketball. That's why I've had every other opportunity in my life is because of the way I carry myself, the way I play the game. Um, and going into my professional career, I plan to do the same exact thing. Is like my focus is solely on basketball, um, you know, being the best I can. I don't have to do school anymore. That's pretty exciting. I do have to get my degree. I graduate on May 14th. But other than that, um, you know, my 110% focus is on basketball. And, you know, when I do that really well and carry myself really well, everything kind of just takes care of itself. Uh, Caitlin, staying in the center center section, the last row, right in front of the screen. Hey, Caitlin, uh, you made it morning with the New York Times. Um, how has the filming been for the ESPN documentary um, with uh, uh, Omaha? And, like, do you think that'll help get people to watch the WNBA more, to get, like, a behind-the-scenes look? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm actually an executive producer on the show, which has been kind of fun for myself. And when Peyton Manning reached out, obviously, it's his production company, I was a little skeptical at first, but I was like, I don't know if I really want to let people into my life like that. I've never really done it. But um, the way this year has unfolded, the way, um, you know, obviously Camilla and Kiki, the seasons that they had, I mean, you can't script it any better. It's been absolutely incredible for women's basketball. And if you're a women's basketball fan or you're not a women's basketball fan, I encourage you to watch the show when it comes out. I've seen bits and pieces. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it really allows you to understand the student athlete for way more than just a basketball player. And I think that's really important. I think that's going to allow, um, you know, fans of the W, fans of college to really, you know, understand what they go through, but love them even more for who they are and what they do and what they're about. So um, I'm excited for everybody to see it. And it's been a special project. Uh, Caitlin, to your right, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Caitlin. Alexa, Phil, who, yes, fan, congratulations. Uh, the Fever haven't been to the postseason since Tamika Catchings mm -hmm. was on the team. You've had some time to think about what your role could be like in, in mm -hmm. Indiana. How important or how excited are you about the prospect of, of hopefully getting the Fever back in the playoffs with mm -hmm. this young core that you're building around? Yeah, absolutely, and that's definitely our goal is to get back to championship habits, and I think – it's so cool for me. Like, I vividly remember um, my freshman year during the bubble. We played Kentucky in the round of 32, and Tamika was on the game, and I was, like, tweaking out. Like, I couldn't believe she was calling one of my games. Like, Sierra. somebody I idolized, um, somebody that I loved, and somebody that is not only a great basketball player and everything that she did, but she's a tremendous person. Um, and I just think that speaks to the organization as a whole, and everything they do is so first class. And I'm very lucky to be, be going there uh, to an organization that – really loves women's basketball. I mean, you see it today. I think they had 17,000 tickets claimed to just watch the draft. I think that shows the excitement in Indianapolis. Um, it's a great basketball city. Obviously, what the Pacers have been able to do this year is special in the playoffs. And, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just excited. And like you said, there's a lot of young talent on the team. And, you know, just getting back to the playoffs and doing everything we can to win a lot of basketball games is certainly the goal. Caitlin, to your left in the first row. Hi, Shara Taylor, New York Beacon. Congratulations. Thanks. Can you take us through the emotions of being the number one all-time scorer in the NCAA to the emotions you felt when you heard your name called today? Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like this was definitely a little bit more emotional for me, and I think that's because, like, when you're in the heat of competition, like, you don't have time to, like, really feel your emotions. Like, you're so competitive and you're so fiery. Like, you're not really worried about all that. And I think that was, like, the biggest thing through my career is, like, 
first of all, I was able to have a lot of closure in the way my career ended and uh, everything that was I was able to do. Obviously, I played the maximum number of games I could play my senior year, and obviously we didn't win, but, um, you know, I feel like you did everything you can uh, to be in that moment and compete as hard as you can, but when, you know, when you're kind of just sitting at a table waiting for your name to be called, I think that really allows the emotions to feed you. And you're with your family. Like, obviously, playing a basketball game, I'm not out there with my family. So sharing that moment with them and, and enjoying it and people that have really had my back and believed in me more than anyone is, is super special. All right, for our last question, we're going to turn to Zoom. Jeff Linder, Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Caitlin, congratulations. Um, just, uh, um, you're, you're going to a basketball crazy state in, in Indiana. Indiana is basketball. Basketball is Indiana. Just, uh, your thoughts of being part of that. Well, I know the Indiana Hoosiers didn't love me too much during my career, but hopefully we can turn a lot of them into fewer fans. And if they're not already, um, I think, you know, going to a state that supports not only basketball, but women's basketball. I mean, going and playing in front of at Indiana, like the place is sold out. Um, you know, doing the same for the Fever is, you know, certainly our goal and having a lot of fans there every single night. And for myself, I can't imagine a more perfect fit, uh, a better place for me to start my professional career, an organization that really just believes in women's basketball and wants to do everything the right way. Um, so I couldn't be, you know, more excited to get there. Caitlin, thank you. Thanks. To our media, stay with us. We're going to be joined immediately. Andre. Wow. This is crazy. Thank you, Cameron. We're going to start right away with a question. Uh, to your right, Cameron, to your right in the Hi, first row. Hi, Cameron. Oh, oh, over here. To okay. your right. Oh, wait, right. Howard Magdal at the next. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, when you saw the draft order kind of work its way out and saw L.A. at number two, how much did that feel like? a fit for you, not just basketball-wise, but also with just all the things you bring, uh, you know, off the court as well? Um, I love that I'm, I get to stay on the West Coast, and I love that they took a chance on me, and I feel like I'm just going to show that I can, I can work really hard and help them a lot. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll still be close to family, which is really important for me. Hey, Cameron. Uh, this is Megan Hall with USA Days for the win. So my question to you is obviously it's very, very early in your WNBA career, but when it's all said and done, what sort of legacy do you hope to leave on the court? That's a good question. Um, I would say I just want to continue the legacy of growing the sport, and I feel like I've said this a lot today, but we really have to look back at the women before us, and I know people keep saying that this is a historic draft class, but there were many, many talented draft classes before us. So um, I just want to give my props to the Don Staley, Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie's, because you know they're why I'm here, because I watched them growing up. And so I just hope that I can continue that legacy for younger girls. Uh, Cameron, uh, to your right in the second row. Hey, Cameron, right here. Uh, Jackie Powell with the next. Uh, building off of that, you obviously mentioned the people you watched. What do you remember about the WNBA growing up, and how do you think its perception in the popular culture has changed? So growing up, I, I said this earlier before as well, but growing up, I was kind of first introduced to the league because my mom was a product line manager at Nike and worked on Don Staley's signature shoe and worked with Tamika Catchings and Jen Rosati, who I've played three and three basketball for. So I think I grew up just having so much ad admiration for these women. And it was just really upsetting to not see that reciprocated by the public, what you see on social media. And I always do think the negative stands, it stands out more than the positive, unfortunately. But um, it was really upsetting for me. And there were a lot of times where I, I was just kind of dumbfounded by the negativity. But I think you know now there's a positive switch. And hopefully, we just can keep that momentum going. Hey, Cameron Lloyd Cam Carroll from the Queen's Chronicle. Uh, first of all, what did you study at Stanford? And also, you went to high school in Beaverton, Oregon, which is the home of a certain well-known sports apparel company, yes. but yet you signed with New Balance. I was curious how that happened. Yeah, so I studied communications at Stanford. 
Um, and yeah, my parents both worked for Nike for 20 plus years, grew up in Beaverton, that's where the world headquarters are. Yep, so I'm definitely a Nike kid, born and raised. Um, I know, but New Balance came to me with, I see you're wearing New Balances, by the way. <laughs> Love it. Um, but I, I'm just so thankful for them because they have signed me as their first female basketball player. And they are just a phenomenal brand through and through what they stand for, how they support their athletes. So I, I truly could not be more excited. And I, I converted, for sure. Cameron, in the center section, last row to your right. Hi, Cam. Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. I have two questions. One, you were pretty emotional up there. And I'm wondering, uh, are your emotions, were, were you worried about where you might go? Or is it a big part of this this huge moment for women's basketball? And also, who's hit you up on your phone yet since you've been drafted? Has a certain god brother? Oh, yes. Um, to answer your first question, um, I just think in these situations, it, it's a business now, and you, and you never know. And I had great conversations with the Sparks and the, Reagan Peebly and Kurt, and they're amazing, but you just never know, and I didn't want to assume anything. So um, it's just such, it's a high-stress environment as well. So when they called my name, uh, just a huge wave of emotions hit me. And when I saw my mom tearing up and my dad, that definitely really hit home. So just was super thankful. And can you remind me of the second question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, Actually, so I actually FaceTimed Steph like five minutes before the, the show started. So he just said to, to just have fun with it. I think he can just share so much great advice because obviously he's been through this. And, you know, he just said um, to make stuff like this fun because it can be stressful to make it fun. So he answered my mom's FaceTime call. I called Seth Curry as well. He hung up immediately because that's Seth. <laughs> uh, but then he called back right after. But, yeah, they're just both great sounding boards for me. Guys, we have time for just one or two more because Camilla is ready to join us. Uh, uh, Cameron, third row, center section, to your left. Hi, Cameron. Lachlan Ross from NBA Australia. Um, you've played a ton of international basketball over the years. Do you have any memorable matchups against Australians? I do, and I played, played with some great Australians as well. Agnes Emanopu is a great friend of mine. Now she's at TCU. But I specifically remember playing against um, Australia... I think U16 or U17 it was. And honestly, they're some of the strongest people I've ever played against. When they hit you with the screen, it takes you a while to recover. Um, and Lauren Jackson is one of my favorite players ever. So I just really admire her. Cameron, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. To our media, stay with us. We're going to be joined immediately by Camilla Cardozo. Guys, if you Camilla, we're going to start right away. Last uh, center section, last row to your left. How you doing, Camilla? Uh -huh. uh, Daniel Artes of the 9450. Um, you, you will be coached by one of the legends of the game in Teresa Witherspoon after being coached by another legend in Dawn Staley. What does that mean to you to be coached by two legends of the game? Um, it means the most to me. It just tells me that I'm going to be in good hands, and I'm just excited to get there and get to work with her. Camilla, staying in the center section, to your right, last row. Hey, Camilla, Dylan Manfred from Sportico. Uh, just talk about the experience that you uh, enjoyed today. I know you said it was your first time at the Empire State Building earlier. Um, so just uh, talk about the what a day it's been for you, and congratulations. Thank you. It's been an amazing day. Um, it was my first time over there. Um, this is a nice view, and... Getting my hair done, my makeup done was also amazing. Being here, getting drafted was amazing. So it's just been a really special moment for me, and everything is going just like I dreamed of. Uh, Camilla, to your right, all the way to the right, first row. Hi, Camilla. Uh, over here, Howard Magdal at the next. Right. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations. Sorry, I'm so far away. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, you know, as a... Big, big, as somebody who is following in a tradition that we've seen in this league, you know, who are some of the players who you are most hoping to emulate, you know, whether it's a Sylvia Fowles, you know, wh where, where do you see it, your pattern emerging in this league? Um, I'll say just um, 
getting in the league and bringing my winning um, leadership, my winning mentality. You know, we won two national championships. So. <laughs> We're going to go to Zoom. Chris, if you would, please. We're going to go to Zoom for one. Chris, go ahead. Thank you so much for taking this brief time out, and congratulations to you. you. What is it that you're looking forward to the most competing at this level compared to when you were competing for national championships? Um, just getting better, um, being more physical, more competition, and I'm just excited to get out there and play with some of the big names of women's basketball. Thank you. Camilla, to your right, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Camilla. Alexa Philpoo, ESPN. Congratulations. Thank you. Could you have ever imagined that you'd be sitting here today as a number three pick when you were growing up in Brazil before even making the jump to come play overseas here in, in the U.S.? Yeah, I feel like that was the dream, but honestly, no, I didn't really expect this. I'm just so proud that I am here right now. Um, and I know little Camilla, when I was 13 years old, is also proud. And I'm just excited to be here and happy. Uh, sec second row center. Wilton Jackson from the Knicks Camilla, congratulations. Um, I want to ask you this question. You were kind of emotional with uh, Holly Rowe. I just want to ask, like, how do you, how have you summarized everything from winning the national championship and, and getting drafted? What was going through your mind in that moment? Um, it's been some crazy couple of days. I'm just so proud of my teammates for winning the national championship. I'm just so happy to be here. And I got really emotional because the main goal was to get here and being able to give my family a better life. And just by looking at them and seeing them on my table was amazing. And I always get emotional when I talk about my family because I'm so proud of everything I was able to accomplish and do for them. Camilla in the second row, center, right in front. Second row, center. Hi, Megan McGovern with NBC Sports. Um, Angel Reese was just drafted um, seventh to the sky. So how do you guys think your games will complement each other? Um, I think it's going to be great. Um, she's a great player. I'm a great player. So two great players together. Nobody's going to get no rebounds on us. <laughs> I'm going to turn to Zoom for a second. Andrew Seligman. Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Camilla. Congratulations. Um, just how much time have, have you ever been to Chicago? And just what are your thoughts about the city and being, no. you know, coming here? Hi, so it's actually going to be my first time in Chicago. I'm really excited. I hear really good things about it. I have, like, some of the best pizzas, and I'm excited to get there. <laughs> no? I'm going to stay with Zoom. Shy, go ahead. Shy, go ahead. Hi, Camila. Uh, congratulations. Um, I, I was wondering if you were aware of the, the global attention around uh, women basketball and around you and your team. Um, and are you planning on, um, on playing someday in the future in, uh, in Europe or, or somewhere else? Yeah, I would like to go play overseas somewhere. Um, I think that gets you better. I feel like every time I play for my national team, it got me better somehow. So I'm excited to go to the WNBA and then go be able to play overseas somewhere. Okay, uh, we're going to go one more with Zoom. Gabriella, go ahead. Gabriella. Gabriella Lewis, the next. Hi, Camilla. You are one of 13 game, okay. Gamecocks uh, in training camp this year. What about Don Staley and that program really uh, brings people ready for this next level? Yeah, I feel like that tells you a lot about Coach Staley. Um, she gets you ready for this level. She works with you so you can be prepared whenever you step to the next level. And like I said, that just tells you everything about her. She gets you prepared for the league. I want to uh, stay with Zoom, and we're going to go to Chris. Chris, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Got you. So, uh, Camilla, with everything that you were able to accomplish at the collegiate level, what do you think is going to be a great first-year accomplishment for you in the WNBA? Um... I don't know. I'm just excited to get there, get to work, um, learn from the best, and just step up my game, step my game up. All right, next up, Christos. Christos, go ahead. Hey, Camilla, congratulations, first of all. And uh, I would like to ask you, how, after such a great experience in NCAA, winning championships, uh, coaching, uh, playing under Don Staley, how do you vision yourself into the WNBA? What is your main goal as a WNBA player? 
Um, my main goal as a WNBA player is just to step my game, um, being a sponge, um, soak it in everything from everybody, learn each and every day, and be a better version of myself each and every day, be open to learn new stuff, and stay with it. All right, uh, last question will be uh, all the way to the left in the front row. Hi, Camilla. Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. What has been your conversation so far with Teresa and Jeff? And which player, um, I guess, any specific that you're most looking forward to joining forces with within the sky? Um, my conversations with them being amazing. Um, I'm all about energy. She has a great energy. He has a great energy. I'm just excited to get there and get to work with them. And about a specific to me, I am just excited to meet the whole team. Sorry, one more. Angel was just selected with the number seven overall pick. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on, on you two being a front court of the future for the Chicago Sky? I'm happy. I'm really excited. She's a great player. I'm a great player. I think we're going to do great things together. All right, everybody. Camilla, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, everybody stay with us because we're going to have J.C. Sheldon right away. JC, we're going to start uh, all the way to the right in the first row, over this way. Hi, JC. Hi. Howard Mandel, and that's good to see you, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, just, you really bet on yourself coming back to school, and I'm just wondering if those thoughts went through your mind in the moments following the draft, and just related what it meant to share that with Emmy in that moment. Yeah, it's, it's special. I think, you know, taking, taking that fifth year was something I thought hard and long about, and I'm glad I did. Um, a lot of good things came from it, and obviously having Emmy next to me, it makes everything easier and that much more special. So she's made a huge impact on me, and, geez, everyone at Ohio State, and it's been really cool to see. JC, in the center section, last row. Jayla Van Horn, the last turn. JC, you mentioned Emmy, and she's here today. Obviously, she's played a big role in your collegiate career. Could you just talk about her impact, and should we expect to see her at any of your WNBA games? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's, she's everything to me. Um, she's my why. She's why I do it, why me and my brother work so hard at it. Um, but she's special, man, and, and I really hope so. I know it'll be a little harder for them to travel, but I feel like absolutely they'll make it to some games. <laughs> JC, second row to your right. Hi, JC. Jackie Powell with the next. Um, I'm curious what you remember about, well, first of all, congratulations, but I'm curious what you remember about the WNBA growing up and how you think its perception in the popular culture has changed. Yeah, it's, it's a surreal moment because I grew up, you know, as a little kid watching all these women play and how talented they are and, and being able to have a chance to play with them and compete against them. It's, it's, a dream. It's what we all are here for, and it's what we're all looking forward to. So I'm, I'm excited. I've seen the growth. Everyone's seen the growth. And to be a part of that um, is something that is really rare. So I'm looking forward to it. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> JC, center section, last row to your right. Hey, JC. Dylan May from Sportico. Uh, first things first, congratulations. Um, just curious how you plan to maximize the business opportunity of the WNBA. Um, you know, the league is growing in terms of their sponsorships. And, you know, this high-profile draft class obviously has a lot of NIL deals. So how do you plan to, like, maximize the business opportunity you have in front of you uh, off the court um, as you prepare for your WNBA career? Absolutely. I think that's something that's really big in, in today's world, especially with our class. And it's exciting just to have those opportunities as women athletes. I think it's something that is kind of new to us, and it's, it's exciting, and it's absolutely something people should take advantage of. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm just, I'm just ready to go play ball down there right now. <laughs> now we're going to turn to uh, Zoom for a moment. Courtney, you're up. Courtney, go ahead. All right, Courtney Harden from The Real Deal. Uh, what adjustments uh, do you think you have to make um, once you now that you're drafted to the WA? What part of your game do you think you have to adjust the most? 
adjustment. Yeah, I so. think there's going to be an adjustment period for all of us, um, whether whether people want to admit it or not. And I think I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm welcoming it. Um, I think as a rookie, that's something you have to accept and be ready for. Um, the pace, I'm sure, the length, I'm sure there's a lot of things that are going to be a little different and going to take some time to get used to. But like I said, I'm, I'm welcoming that challenge and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, JC, center section, last row to your left. Hi, JC. Lauren from the 9450. Congrats. First off, um, and what's the best piece of advice you've gotten in regards to transition to the league? To the league? Yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot. I've got to spend some time with some vets um, the past couple of days, and, and they've been really helpful. Just staying confident with who you are and, and what you do well is something that I, I took from them just a couple of days ago. But I think that's important because when you're good at something, you can excel in that area. And, and really keying in on that and, and taking that with you to the next level is definitely something I'll take from them. JC, staying, staying in the center section to your left in the third row. Hi, Jenna Hawk from Bloomberg News. Congratulations, first of all. Um, who are you most excited to play with on your team, and who are some of your biggest rivals and competitors that you're looking forward to face off in? Yeah, that's that's. Real. I'm excited to play with everyone, to be honest, on that team. Like I said, I grew up watching them, and I think being 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 able to play with them now and getting that opportunity is something that, like I said, was a dream. Um, they're a really talented group, and I know um, they're going to push me. You know, day one when I get there, so I'm excited for that. Um, and, and competing really against everyone. The league is the talents. You guys have seen it, and it's no joke, and it's something that I'm looking forward to and excited for. And like we said, there'll be an adjustment, but I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, JC, uh, right section, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Alexa Philpoot, ESPN, congratulations. Um, what have your conversations been like with Dallas so far? I know uh, Coach LT is huge on defense. I'm sure that she probably told you that in your conversations, what you bring, but what have you kind of gotten out of those uh, discussions so far? Yeah, we've had really good discussions. Um, Coach is awesome, and, and just being able to talk about, you know, their system and, and how they like to do things there was, was awesome for me to learn. And I'm sure I'll be having more conversations soon, but um, like I said, they've been really good, and I'm looking forward to talking to them more. Last row center, White Sport. Chasey, in the last row. Good. Obviously, you've had a lot of great moments at Ohio State. What do you hope is the legacy that you left behind being there for five years? Yeah, I was there for a minute, and I got to experience Buckeye Nation and, and just being staying in Ohio, which was amazing. Um, I think just just the way we represented that university and the way they're going to continue to. Um, it's an honor to put on that jersey every day. It's an honor to play in front of, you know, Buckeye Nation every night. So I just hope that, you know, we left a legacy of, you know, hard work going out there every night and giving it, giving it our all. And as far as representing the university and our fans, I hope we made him proud. Chasey, thank you. Thank you. Everybody, we're going to be joined momentarily by Aaliyah Edwards, so stay where you are. Aaliyah, welcome. We're going to begin. Your first question will come from the left section, third row all the way to your left. Hey, hey, what's up, Aaliyah? Kareem Hi. Copeland, Washington Post. Um, just two-parter real quick. You know, what was the moment like in secondary? I don't know how much you know about Shakira Austin, but how do you kind of envisioning fitting in and playing besides her? Uh, for the first question, uh, the moment, man, it was the moment for me uh, right before the commissioner said my name, I just looked down and, and thought to myself and said a little prayer, like, it's your time, it's God timing, and she said my name, and that's when the waterworks started happening, so uh, just super grateful for the, this moment and this opportunity. Uh, with your second question with Shakira, great player, um, followed her from D1 all the way to the W, and I think I'm just... Uh, Happy to really get the opportunity to play alongside her. Such a great player. I think that um, she's going to elevate me. I can elevate her too. But whatever 
impact I can take for this for this team and to this organization. Aaliyah, uh, next question, all the way to the right in the first row. Hi, Aaliyah. Howard Mandel, the next. Congrats and good to see you. Thank you. Um, you've talked about the evolution of your mid-range game, and you've talked about it in terms of thinking the way you would play at the next level. In your conversation with Mike and across the league, how much did that come up, and how rewarding was it to see that still be something that teams were interested in? Very rewarding, and I think uh, one of the things going into this league that I want to do is just expand my game. Um, might be asked to play a different role, but I'm open to it. I see myself as a versatile player and impacting in any position that um, I'm asked to play in. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a tough league, tough first year, but um, I'm pumped and I'm ready for the challenge. Leah, center section, last row to your right. Maggie Benoni, Hersey, Hersey Team Media. Aliyah, can you just take us through these past 10 days of coming back from Cleveland? I saw you got to go home for a little bit, and now that you're here. Oh my gosh, it's been it's been a lot, uh, long days, a lot of long days. But um, once I hit the weekend, once I was with my fellow draftees, that's when I started really sinking in the moment and, and just being appreciative for uh, being a part of this. And um, you mean the W is is the W, and it's a great league, and I, I'm just super excited to be a part of it. But uh, the process is no joke for sure. Aaliyah, to your uh, center section, second row to your left. Hi, Jennifer Porti from Let's Talk Women in Basketball. How does it feel to finally have your WNBA dream come to fruition? And also, what advice would you give young girls who also look forward to playing in the WNBA one day? Oh, my gosh. Just to have a dream like this and to actually walk through it, I said this out there, um, it's just amazing. A lot of people have dreams, but a lot of people aren't able to achieve it. So for me to be fortunate enough to say that and to keep going and to keep pushing my dreams, uh, it's just amazing. I would say my message for the younger girls is just be confident, um, be who you are, uh, but know your worth. I mean, uh, coming from Canada, um, wasn't given as many opportunities as, say, my fellow draftees, but I made the best out of it, and I earned everything that I was given. So um, stay humble, but, you know, let them know. All right, next question, center, second row. Emily Adams, Hartford Current. Uh, Elio, just what has it been like to go through this experience of the last few days with Nika and also to have, you know, Paige and AZ and all them here tonight as well? Oh my gosh, it's great. Uh, the Bleed Blue bleeds all the way into the league and um, I'm just very fortunate for to be given the opportunity to go to UConn and spend my four years there, but especially spend my four years there with Nika. Um, you know, we had a hug when my name was called and it's just it's just a lot because the people and the relationships you build over this beautiful game that we play, um, it's amazing. And to share this moment with her um, and Coach and CD and Jay and Mo and, um, you know, Paige and AZ were in the audience too. It's just, it's a family and, I, and I'm hoping to uh, make a new family in D.C. Uh, Aaliyah, third row center. Hi, Aaliyah. Hi. Miley Bandolo with NBA Australia. First of all, congratulations. The uh, game of basketball is growing internationally at such a rapid rate, and girls like yourself are laying the foundation for that growth. How does it feel to be inspiring the next generation within, within Asia? It feels great. I feel like the platform that I was given, even though at first I wasn't really sure that um, I was able to step into it, but I've had to step into it. I've had to kind of um, live in my truth. Uh, because I know that a lot of young girls are looking up to me and a lot of people who um, inspire to be like me um, are watching. So you're not only playing for yourself, you're playing for those following behind you. And you're also playing for those who laid the groundwork work in front of you. You know, coming into the W, I, I respect that. I appreciate, I'm not going to say elders because I don't want them getting on me, but appreciate our vets. Um, and, you know, I'm going to soak up all the experience, but also knowing that I have a huge impact across the border in Canada and across the border in Asia, too. Aaliyah, thank you. To our media, stay with us. We're going to be joined in a moment by Angel Reese. Thank you. Thank you. Aaliyah, thank you.
Aaliyah. Road to your left. Thank you. Angel, welcome. The Hi. first question is going to come all the way to your left in the first row, and Hi, then we'll do the entire second row. Hi, Angel. Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun Times. First off, congratulations. Thank you. Second, what have your conversations been like leading up to this moment with the sky, with Teresa, if at all? And when you, I'm curious if, if you were paying attention to some of these mock drafts that had you <laughs> going to the sky. Um, my conversations were great with Teaspoon. Um, as you know, um, she was coached by Coach Mulkey. So I kind of, I, I kind of, kind of thought like maybe I'll, I'll go there. And knowing like the conversations were so good and she felt like a mother to me. Um, being able to be a black woman and as, as a head coach and everything she's done at the NBA level, um, I just knew everything they were bringing to the table. Jeff, the GM, was amazing too. And player development is something that I, what I was looking for and they looked for in me. So I'm super excited for this move and I'm just looking forward to getting to Chicago. And second question for me, you've talked in detail about, you know, how much intensity, effort, competitiveness you bring to the floor. Specifically, we got to see you and Camilla battle for years against each other, and now you're going to be on the same team. What are you looking forward to about, um, you know, combining both of your talents and, and playing together instead of against? My first time playing Camilla was on the, one of the biggest stages of my life when she played for Hamilton Heights, and I played for uh, St. Francis in high school, and we battled. And now being able to be teammates is going to be amazing. I actually talked to her earlier and was congratulating her. I know she just came off an amazing run, an amazing college career. So I'm looking forward to playing with her in, pra uh, in practice and then in games, just bouncing off of each other. So I'm excited for this. Thank you. Angel, we're going to go with the center section, second row, and we're going to pass the microphone to your left after your question. Jennifer Porti from Let's Talk Women in Basketball. What motivational quote do you live by? And also, if you could pick a movie that describe how you're emotionally feeling right now, what <laughs> movie would it be and why? Okay, so the quote I live by is, every day the sun don't shine, but that's why I love tomorrow. Um, Every day the sun don't shine, but I love tomorrow. Like, you're not going to have, every day is not going to be a great day. And a lot of times in my life, I felt like I was, I was down. But I always look to the next day because I know something else is greater or something greater was going to happen. So that's the quote I live by. Um, I don't know. I don't know what movie right now. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what movie right now. Angel staying in the second row center. Mm -hmm. Hi, Megan McGovern with How NBC Sports. Um, just a little bit of a personality question. What are you looking forward to most in Chicago? Ooh, summertime, shy town. I mean, I just walked the steps because I said I need to get my summer body right um, and to be cute on and off the court. But I don't know. I've always been to Chicago. Um, the shopping is great. Um, and just the lifestyle. I'm, I'm excited. I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shy town girl. <laughs> Angel, also in the second row center. Hey, Angel, this is Megan Hall with USA Today's For the Win. Wanted to ask you, when you're introduced on game day, what song will be playing for you if you could pick it? <laughs> Something Megan Thee Stallion. I love Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion or Beyonce? Sure Thank you. Uh, right behind them. Megan, right behind you. Hi, Angel. Lachlan Ross from NBA Asia. Um, you've obviously seen the impact here in America that this draft class has had on everybody over the last four years. Um, I'm wondering if you've had a chance to reflect on the global impact, particularly in places like Asia and in Australia. Um, I have so many people reach out to me from so many different places. Um, understanding our impact isn't just within our school, within just the U.S., but it's worldwide. It's amazing to see. And... Going out of the country, when we go out of the country with my team, with LSU, it was like so much fun because they all recognized us and they knew us and it felt like home. So I feel like anywhere we all go, and this draft class is amazing, anywhere we go, like we're known. And this is super cool because women aren't usually recognized around the world like how we are. And it's not even just basketball. It's the impact that we've left on people's lives outside of there. So it's super cool to see. 
Angel, uh, in the center section, the third row to your left. Hi, Jenna Hawk from Bloomberg News. Um, you are very talented, and you're also part of a really talented draft class. Who are you most excited to play off against again? Oh, I think our duo, me and Camilla versus Cam and Rakia, is going to be cool to see. I think that's going to be fun. Uh, Angel, first row in the on the left to your left, Angel, first row. I share Taylor, New York Beacon. Um, what message do you have for those high school girls in Baltimore who are looking up to you? Just be you. A lot of people may just tell you that you can't do certain things, and you're going to get more yeses than noes. And I had to realize that um, just being able to be authentic, and people love me because who I am. I have those tough conversations. I say things that a lot of people are scared to say and take that scary step. I took a scary step of faith going to LSU, not knowing what could happen, and look how my life has completely changed. So being able to just believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and have an amazing team behind me is, is, is great. Yeah, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about that emotion going from um, the last few months to having your name called a few moments ago? Um, I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, obviously coming back would have been amazing for me, but I wanted more for myself. I wanted to start over. I felt like I had been in a high for since the national championship, and I want to hit rock bottom. I want to be a rookie again. I want to be knocked down by vets, and I want to be able to get up and grow and be a sponge. So I'm just super excited to play with the amazing players and against amazing players. And this league is really competitive, and I'm a competitive player, so I want to play against a lot of players. Great players. We have time for two more questions. Center uh, section, third row. Hi, Angel. Hey. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, can you talk me through all the emotions you were feeling when you heard your name called? <sighs> well, my mom was crying before the show even started, so it started there. And then my brother was like, agitating me, I bet you $100 did you cry. I bet you $100 did you cry. I'm like, he kind of got me too. And I had a great conversation, like she was saying, with Chicago. So I kind of knew I was, if it wasn't the Mystics, I knew it was going to be Chicago that was going to be calling me home. Thank you. Okay, Angela, our last question will come uh, all the way to your right, standing in the back. Hi. Finally. Hi, Angel. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm Jay with ABC News. How you doing? Um, first and foremost, to be in this class, one of the most highly anticipated classes, considered to be the game changers, what does that mean to you? It means everything. I mean, like I said, on and off the court, we're amazing. Now, we're not just basketball players. We're super impactful to the community, the people around us, the little kids that look up to us, and being able to also be nationwide. Everybody knows us everywhere we go. Um, our lives are normal, and we might get a little bit of normalcy going into the league now, um, but I'm just excited to be a trailblazer. I'm excited to be a part of history and just can continue to see the future, and I know it's bright. All right, last question. I'm sorry, good? All set? All right, thank you very much, Angel.